Yo guys, what is up? Max in our Elden Ring video and today we're going to be going over how to build a Frozen Lightning Blade character. Now, Frozen Lightning Blade or Frozen Lightning is a element. There's only three different ways to really apply Frozen Lightning to enemies uh, and it originally when the game launched wasn't quite strong. Since then it's seen a few buffs and I wanted to test it out and I was kind of really impressed by how much damage you can actually output with a setup like this. I've done a lot of tweaking here, and this is actually a build that you can start the game with and progress and get stronger and even go through multiple new game playthroughs. Uh, the gameplay from this footage was on New Game Plus while I was still trying to like hone and tweak this build. I'm really happy with the results and I wanted to share with you guys. Hope you guys enjoy the video. We're gonna go over what the build is first, and then at the end of the video, we'll go over how to acquire this gear and progression uh, of actually making this build. So how does this build work? What's the play style? And how are we able to output as much damage as we can? So to start us off, this is a dual wielding frozen lightning blade katana build. We are going to be using the dragon scale blade as our main damage source or one of our main damage sources. This is dropped later on in the game. So it's not a weapon you're going to be able to start the game with. Uh, you can get a little bit later, but it's unique skill is ice lightning sword. Now, when we do this ice lightning sword, um, we are going to do a beefy chunk to enemies that are right next to us. Uh, we've got enough poise that we won't get staggered out of that hit with our current armor. And then we've got a frozen lightning um, armament on our weapon. This allows us to freeze enemies, which is going to proc chill on them and mean that they take 20% increased damage from all sources while they're chilled, as well as we've got lightning, which we can scale uh, the damage of. In addition to that, we are using the lightning Nagakiba. Now, I've messed around with a few different weapons or different katanas in our offhand, and this is the one I've settled on. The reason I wanted to use the Lightning Nagakiba is one, it's going to give us blood loss buildup. You'll note one of the big weaknesses of the Dragon Scale Blade in terms of the katana family is it does not have a way to proc blood loss. So originally I wanted to use two of these, but I'd have to offhand and then buff and then put the main one in my hand and then buff. This one means that we don't, we have less steps in order to achieve our amount of damage and we get blood loss buildup. Uh, you can use the Nagakiba or the Uchigatana. Uchigatana you can start the game with. So if you want to uh, spec into this build, you can start working from literally level one on leveling up your Uchigatana and turning it into a lightning Uchigatana. Uh, but I've decided I went with the Nagakiba just for the increased reach of it. Now, in addition to that, so our two weapons are going to be light doing lightning damage, frozen damage, and bleed damage. Meaning, with that frozen damage, we're going to be debuffing enemies. However, we're also specking into Faith. Now, Faith is really important to this build for a few reasons. First off, at 34 Faith, it gives us access to the Frozen Lightning Spear incantation. Now, Frozen Lightning Spear is great for big targets. You can get it to hit really hard, but... In my testing of this build, the faith investment is not worth it. I wanted to keep this character at a lower level, and while incantations are great, um, we're mainly using them for debuffing and buffing. So Frozen Lightning Spear is a great way to build up Frost on a big group of enemies or just a large enemy in general, meaning they're going to take 20% more damage. And at 34 faith, we get access to three buffing incantations. The Flame Grant Me Strength incantation, the Howl of uh, Shabriri, uh, or Howl and the Golden Vow. This allows us to not only debuff the enemies with our chill, but also buff ourselves up. And this is what leads to so much damage. Uh, we're also going to be prioritizing being able to recover our stamina really quickly so that we can wail on enemies, build up that frost as fast as possible, plus those bleed procs. Uh, and this build just does so much damage. So in accordance with being able to attack enemies quickly and build up that lightning damage. Uh, we're using the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. This is going to greatly raise our attack power with successive attacks, which our Katanas will do for us. Lightning Scorpion Charm is going to boost the damage of our lightning. The Radagon Source Seal is a flex slot. This gives us 20 levels of stats. It's really nice, uh, and I wanted to keep the level of this character pretty low, so that's super great. If you wanted to, you could flex to a Green Turtle Talisman, uh, or for something like the Dragon Crest Great Shield for uh, more survivability if you didn't want to take this uh, increased damage taken from the Source Seal, but I personally really, really like that. Um, 
And then lastly, in our slot, we got the Ritual Sword Talisman. This is something I just wear for bosses, just because it's really nice. Uh, if you wanted to wear something that isn't just for bossing, um, I do a lot of bossing on this. Um, things like the Flux Canvas Talisman, Potency of Incantations is nice. Godfrey's Icon is nice, um, but I would probably prefer just to rock something like the Green Turtle in addition with this, just so we can be as agile, as fast, uh, and, and whale with our attacks without having to ever slow down. Uh, one of the biggest DPS limiting factors on dual wielding builds is when you run out of stamina, then you have to stop swinging. And if we have uh, some things to buff up our stamina with our lower level, uh, that is going to allow us to output more damage because we don't have to stop attacking. Um, and most things will be dead bef before, uh, before we're done. So let's put this to the Ritual Sword, once again, for bossing. And now let's talk about our armor and our stats. So real quick, we're using the Knight's Cavalry set. Uh, this is going to give us 53 poise, which is perfect. I really like the look of it. It like has that like lightning knight kind of vibe to it, uh, which is perfect for me. And 53 is exactly the point that we want to be at for our poise to not get staggered out of our frozen lightning blade attack. This will allow us to buff safely and hit enemies, connect with them, guaranteed. Obviously, there are some attacks that will break our poise, but 53 is exactly where we want to be for that specific attack, which is great. Uh, we're using the Gravel gravel Stone Seal to buff up our, um, our incantations uh, if you want to use them for damage. Once again, your incantation seal doesn't really matter too much because we're not, but if you were going to invest into one, this would be the one to invest in. And lastly, uh, for our stats and flask, uh, when I take off my Radagon Source Seal, I've got 41 Vigor. That's where the next of these points would be getting. 22 Mind, 30 Endurance, 18 Strength is exactly where we need to be for the Nagakiba. 60 de Dexterity is our breaking point of Dexterity, or our hard cap. Intelligence is at 9, we don't need it. Faith is at 34, that is exactly where we need it to be to be able to cast Frozen Lightning um, and all of our other buffs. And then Arcane is 8, which, once again, we don't need Arcane. Uh, if you're leveling this build, prioritize Dexterity, Endurance, and Vigor. And then once you have your Dexterity where you need it to be, start working your way into more Faith and more Mind uh, is how I would level with this build. Lastly, our Flask of Wondrous Physique. I've got the Lightning Shrouded Crack tier and the Green Burst Crystal tier. Uh, once again, more stamina so that we can be attacking as much as possible, never slowing down, uh, dodging as much as we want, never getting caught out, and then boosting our Lightning Damage. To stay on theme, we're going to be taking the Samurai class that starts us with the Uchigatana, which you can immediately start adding Smithing Stones to, and then we'll be transitioning into more of a Lightning Samurai build, which I personally think is sick. So right off the start of your playthrough, after you get through the tutorial, you can go to Agia Lake, go left, uh, and underneath this bridge through this river where you will pop up to an NPC uh, that's going to invade you. This NPC can be a little tricky if you're like, haven't put any points into any levels yet. Uh, they will try to bleed you, but once you kill them, you get the Reduvia Dagger and then just continue up of the lake uh, to find this NPC that's standing under this bridge. If you kill this NPC, you'll then get the Nagakiba. Now the Nagakiba is the other weapon that I was using in this build. And now you're starting your playthrough just 10 minutes in, dual wielding katanas that can both bleed and you've got yourself a really strong start. If you actually go to the southmost part of the lake, you can find some ruins, which will have a hidden chamber and a chest that will teleport you to Kaled. From that Kaled teleport, you're going to work your way up north to the Fort Faroth. This is where you can grab Radagon's Source Seal, which will give us plus 20 into our stats, aka the equivalent of 20 levels, um, which is really a nice start. And you can also kill the big dragon here and cheese the Knight's Cavalry if you'd like to also get some big runes to start your playthrough. To transform our katanas into lightning katanas, we're going to be coming to the West Capital Ramparts to pick up the Sanctified Wet Blade. This will allow us to pick a Ash of War for our katanas and then change that Ash of War's uh, damage to be lightning, which is super, super useful, especially for this playthrough and until we get our Dragon Scale Blade. Our lightning scorpion charm, we're going to come over to the Wyndham Catacombs where you will need two stone sword keys. Uh, there is a little stone sword key room in these catacombs where if you use two, you'll be rewarded with the lightning scorpion charm.
to actually get the dragon scale blade we're going to be coming over to the lake of rot now this area can be a little bit annoying but as a faith user you can use flame cleanse me uh this is only a 12 faith requirement and will alleviate the scarlet rot buildup after you kill this soldier you will be rewarded with your dragon scale blade to get to our frozen lightning spear, you're going to be coming down the Ansel River well to get to Ansel River, making your way through there till you fight the Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella, and after beating this boss, you will be rewarded with your frozen lightning incantation. Lastly, to get the Knight's Cavalry Armor, we're going to be coming over to the Inner Consecrated Snowfield. Uh, you'll find a carriage being pulled by two giants and a Knight's Cavalry, which will be guarding them. If you take out this Knight's Cavalry, you will get the full Knight's Cavalry set, which is the armor that we or I am using for this build. If you want to use it, you totally can. Uh, just make sure you take out both of them, and you should be good to go. Guys, that is going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. This is a little bit more of a tricky build to put together because some of the items for it you require later on. But getting a start with two dual wielding katanas, both which can apply bleed, and then later turning it into a lightning dex, like frozen lightning build, uh, is really, really strong. And I really enjoyed working on this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you all in the next one. Uh, I did leave out some of the incantations that I use in this just because I just put out a video the other day that showed exactly where all the locations for the incantations that i used on this build were so if you're looking for those just check out the the my last elden ring video i'll catch y'all in the next one guys take care peace